Hey everyone, this is Mike and today I'm back with some more Lost Ark Online. It's been a little while since I've played this game and since we've taken a look at it on the channel, but a few days ago they launched one of the new classes, which is going to be the Lance Master, which you're going to be seeing some gameplay of in the background as well. Now, Lost Ark is a game that I did quite enjoy back when it came out on the Korean version, like I of course played in the beta and then when it finally released in open beta and then full release for the Korean version, did quite enjoy playing it, but of course it had quite a lot of lag for me, so when the Russian version released, I ended up switching over to that one, trying out some of the new classes there. But lately I haven't really had too much time to play it, because right now I'm really spoiled for choice when it comes down to playing games, because there's so many good ones coming out right now, and also like that came out a little while ago. The Lost Ark has kind of been on the back burner, but now them releasing a new class that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. Um, because I did try it briefly on the Korean version, because I still have my Korean account, so I can still hop in and try out some of the new stuff from time to time. Um, so I was really looking forward to getting this one on my hands. Now, when it comes down to the Lance Master, how it plays, it is kind of similar to the Battle Master, which is the melee fighter. Um, but it is a little bit different as well. So the Battle Master works with having two different color skills. You have your yellow skills and your green skills and then you try to balance your yellow and green gauge so that you can use both of your skills. Now, when it comes down to the Lance Master, you're basically switching in between two complete different skill sets. So you have a skill bar for your blue skills, which I'm going to be using for the most part because those are the ones that you get access to the earliest in the game. Red skills take a little while longer for you to get access to. Um, so in the game that you're seeing, I only have two red skills so far. So basically, you're in your blue stance, you use all of your blue skills. As you are in this stance and as you are using skills, you're also going to be building gauges, which there is three total gauges you can build. And then when you switch into the red stance, you're not only going to switch your hotbars into these new skills, but you're also going to be given a damage bonus. Well, I think it's like movement speed, attack damage, and then critical damage as well. Now, when you switch, you of course get all of those new actions, your gauge resets, so you have to go build your gauge again, and then when you used all of your red skills, you can move back into your blue stance, again, refresh that damage buff, and then get all of your blue skills back. Now, a really cool thing is as well that these skills have independent cooldowns, so whereas with some classes, if, for example, you focused a lot on very quick attacks, that, well, for example, or like one-hit attacks or something like that, it could be that you just blown through all of your skills and all of a sudden you have to go and use your auto-attacks for a little while before you get your cooldowns back. Whereas with this one, you use all of your blue skills, you switch to red, now you have a completely new skill set available to you with their own separate cooldowns, so you can use all of your red skills, you switch back to blue, and then you can use those again, and then this switching will also constantly keep refreshing the damage buff that you have. So really cool and interesting playstyle, really fun as well. Um, you basically have some different skills available for each as well, like the blue skill is more about AoEing and that kind of stuff, whereas with the Halberd, whereas the red stance is more of a spear kind of pokey gameplay. Uh, which is pretty cool to switch in between these two. And when you switch stances, you also get a different auto attack, uh, which can be useful as well for different scenarios. So really cool playstyle, really fun. Definitely looking forward to leveling it up a little bit more um, because it did really get me interested into the game again. Now, of course, Lost Ark has been a game that I have always enjoyed because I enjoy how its game design has been. It's basically an ARPG, which is a genre that I do really love and enjoy playing, but it's also mixed together with an MMO. So you have those dungeons, you have like the massive online multiplayer experience with all of the other people that are running around doing dungeons with you and that kind of stuff. But then one of the major endgame activities, which are the Guardian Raids, they're actually kind of like a Monster Hunter style game. So I can't show you this for the Lance Master, of course, because I'm not level 50 yet. But back when I played it on Korea, I did do quite a few of these Guardian Raids. And they're really fun because you just land or like load into the map. You have to try and find the Guardian, which is like the boss that you're going to fight. You have to call it out to your team once you have found the Guardian. And then you just fight it in a kind of Monster Hunter style gameplay as well. Because it doesn't have an aggro list. It just does whatever it wants to do. And then you just try to dodge and deal with all of the attacks and that kind of stuff. So Guardian Raid's really fun part of the experience as well. But of course, it is still an MMO. So there is a lot of other stuff that you get to experience as well. Which is why I've always really enjoyed playing Lost Ark. Now, one of the main reasons why I always am really hesitant to get invested in this game is because the Western release. Now, of course, we have the Korean, which is the main server. 
Then we have the Russian version, which is behind on the Korean server by a little bit. Of course, as I just said, they just released the Lance Master, which I'm not quite sure how long ago that was introduced into Korea, but it was a little while ago. And then, of course, we're going to get the Assassin sometime soon as well, which is one of the new jobs. But we've always been, I've always been very hesitant to really invest a lot of time into this Russian release and this Korean release, um, because even though I did play it a lot back when it came out, I've always been trying to not invest too much time into it because I'm saving myself, so to speak, for the eventual Western release. Now, they did go out and say quite a while back, at least at this point, that the Western release is likely to not happen, which could be a big bummer for not only me, but a bunch of my friends as well. Um, because, of course, the Russian version and the Korean version can only be played with a VPN or with a like IP masking service. For example, I use Noping, also partners with Noping, so use my code, it's in the description if you want to use that. Um, but basically, I use Noping to play this game, but if I didn't have a VPN or I didn't have Noping or something like that, then I wouldn't just be able to play it at all because you need that IP masking in order to play it. So I know that that could be a very big turn off for other people. For example, I am very fortunate that I live in Europe and that means that I'm relatively close to the Russian server. So when I play on Russia, I get around 40 to 60 ping using no ping. Um, if I used my VPN, I got much more, but still, anyways, I get relatively decent ping when I play on the Russian server. But for example, someone from America um, would have a lot higher ping trying to connect to a Russian server or something like that. So of course, a Western release would not only be good for people in Europe, because of course we would have an official English translation, um, because right now there is an English patch for, the ver uh, for both of the versions available, both Korea and um, Russia, but of course it is still a fan translation, it is technically not allowed, so there haven't really been any bans, I haven't had any trouble for using the English patch either, but of course it's not official, so technically it's not allowed. Um, but I do have to say the English patch is really good for this game. So if you've ever wanted to get into the game, it is free to make an account. Yes, you do need a VPN, which can be a little bit annoying. But at this point, I am not really sure when the Western release is going to come, if at all, because Smilegate did go out of their way to say that they were very happy with how the, both the Korean and the Russian versions were doing and that they kind of wanted to make sure that the versions of the game that were there already would be the best that they could be. And that kind of like makes me think that the Western release could either take very long to actually come out or might not come out at all. A lot of people that I know that were interested in Lost Ark have just decided to start playing on the Russian server. One of the Russian servers has also kind of become the official or like unofficial, I guess we'll call it, um, English server. So most of the people that from Europe that speak English are on that one specific server. I'm not quite sure what the name was anymore, um, but basically if you ask me in the comments, I can look it up for you. Um, but yeah, so basically the whole English community is on that one server. So if you want to find English people to play with, just join that one server as well. Uh, and then you'll be able to find a bunch of people that are also English that are playing the game. So at this point, I have kind of given up hope for an actual Western release. But on the other hand, the Russian server does work for me personally, so I don't mind it too much. Of course, it is still a bit of a bummer for all of those other people, um, like, for example, from America or from a little bit further away, or those that don't have access to a VPN and don't want to just pay like however much it is every month just to be able to play this free-to-play game because of course Lost Ark is a free game you don't need to pay a subscription you don't need to buy anything it is relatively free to play friendly as well like I haven't paid any money in any of the versions and I've always been fine um, but yeah it is still a little bit of a bummer if people really do need to get a VPN or something like that um, just to be able to play it of course I already had one before so I didn't really mind it I'm also very fortunate to have the partnership with no ping so I get like free access to that program as well um, but I do know that there's a lot of other people out there that might not have those opportunities or be so lucky like I am. So basically that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Russian release finally has the Lance Master in it, which I'm very excited about. I'm definitely going to be leveling it over the next few days. Uh, might even do some leveling streams of it. I'm not 100% sure yet. Depends when I find the time to do so. Because uh, right now I've just been playing it here or there in between being busy with some other stuff. But we'll have to wait and see about that. And then, of course, a Western version. It would be very nice if it was to happen. Um, I'm still kind of hesitant to put in a crazy amount of time on the Russian version just because 
this Western release could still happen and I'm very hopeful that it does happen at some point because I do know a lot of my friends that would all of a sudden jump into the game if it was to happen of course. Um, so I'm really am looking forward to the one day where that finally does happen but I do hope that it doesn't take too long because if it takes too long then Diablo 4 is going to come out. We also have Part of Exile 2 that is going to release sometime soon and I'm kind of scared that those two games might take away the spotlight of Lost Ark because Lost Ark is a phenomenal game but Diablo 4 and Path of Exile 2 have their own following as well and I think they might just take away the spotlight of Lost Ark if it was to get a western release. But that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me and I'll see you in the next one.